It is Friday, September 29th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday crossword today, which means we have a slightly tricky, unthemed crossword, a themeless puzzle in store for us today. And this themeless, potentially tricky edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, David Innes, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support. They are bringing us this series. They are sustaining this channel. I'm very appreciative uh, of those efforts as I am uh, for the contributions of everybody who has contributed to the Patreon campaign. If you'd like to do that, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field. And there you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, including the preseason puzzle of the current Boss Words Fall Themeless League competition series. So the fir- the very, very first of those, the practice puzzle of the current Boswords League, I did post to the public YouTube channel. They made that puzzle free for anybody to solve, so you can give it a shot yourself. You can watch my solve if you're interested. And then if you'd like to see the rest of the Boswords season, you can um, check those out on the Patreon page. So again, thank you to everybody who's a contributor. And of course, there's the official mug there as well for benefactors. Um, all right, so uh, do subscribe to the channel if you have... Uh, been enjoying these videos. And there is, of course, the Discord server as well, linked in the description field. So with that all being said, let's get on to today's crossword, which is constructed by Malaika Handa. This is her fourth crossword for the New York Times. It was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see how we get on with this themeless edition of the crossword. Spreads concern. I'm not sure. Is that referring to a kind of something spreadable that you would eat or spreading, you know, a substance or spreading out on a bed or something? I don't know. Cut. Uh, well, this could be a piece of meat, a slice, um, a cutting motion of anything, a, um, a, tra- a music track, uh, a film edit, I suppose. <laughs> I guess, yeah, cut could be edit, actually. That is four letters. One pill, perhaps. A dose. I mean, that seems like a reasonable dose. World Capital, whose Museum of Islamic Art was designed by I.M. Pei. So I.M. Pei, certainly the official architect of the New York Times crossword. I think that's fair fair to say. Um, I don't know. I mean, in four letters. It could be Doha, maybe. What is this? Spreads concern. Eddie? Odds, as in the spread, the um, a betting spread, the odds. That that sounds good to me. I like that as a punny sort of answer. And the question mark, of course, indicates the uh, that there's a pun going on in this in this clue. So if this were an O, cut. Oh, omit. Okay. So right, similar to sort of edit out, as I was saying. So that might be the answer. Let's look at this. Let's see if we can just keep this chain going. Word with bubble or high. Yes, um, bubble tea or high tea. High tea is not afternoon tea. Often when people refer to the, um, just so you know, when people refer to the kind of fancy uh, British tea service with little sandwiches and cakes and things, people often call it high tea because they think the high means fancy. Um, Not in this context, although obviously it can in other contexts. That is afternoon tea. The fancy one is afternoon tea. High tea is more of a sort of, uh, It's a. it would be later in the day and it would be more like a closer to a supper sort of meal. It is not, uh, it would be closer in time to that. It's not, and, and it's less fancy, in fact, than afternoon tea. But I've noticed even a lot of actual tea houses now say high tea because I think people just sort of expect it. Okay, a legal product that's still made. Not sure. Seems like a bad idea. Uh, is that I... I'm not sure. Okay, I've run out of steam on my little chain of guesses, but this is certainly odds. I think that's safe to say. Oh, in Doha, I forgot to put that in. That certainly is correct now. So illegal product that's still made, question marks of some kind of pun. Moon something? I'm not sure. Oh, so, right. Snowballs. So the, the B being capitalized in uh, in this clue, oops, suggests that the answer is a proper noun. So in this case, a brand name. That's very common. And this is a, uh, is it a, I was going to say, is it an ice sort of treat? But I think maybe it's not. 
I think it's maybe actually just, I think it's a, it's a confection, a sort of baked confection, maybe. I don't know, but it's some, it's some sort of treat that it commercially sold. Okay. A legal product that's still made. I don't know what's going on with this. That's still made. What uh, moon shoes? I have no idea what this is. What is the pun doing there? I don't know. Seems like a bad idea. I shouldn't. Yeah, that, that's plausible. Let's look at the crosses. Lodge. Oh, an inn. Like a, you know, a guest house or motel or something. NBA team originally based in New Jersey. Is it the Jets or the Nets? Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm really the wrong person to ask. As, as you know, if you've been watching these videos for a while. God who rides the eight-legged horse Sleipnir. Is it Odin? Sort of seems like it would be. So this would be the Nets. Are they the Brooklyn Nets now? That, that rings a bell. Claim in a squabble. Did so. Right. Okay. So this is a kind of format we see in the New York Times crossword often where you have an imagined half of an argument and it could be many combinations of, of, uh, of, of this sort of claim, whether did so, did not, um, am so, am not. It's it just, you, you can sort of keep going for a while with those possibilities and you just have to get it from the, the crosses. Goodness. Oh, oh Lord, maybe. Oh, moon, oh, moonshine. I see. Okay. So moonshine as in uh, sort of bootleg alcohol. And uh, so still made is clever because so the illegal product that's still made, obviously you can read that as it continues to be made. But then the still in this case refers to the actual distilling of alcohol and the still being part of the equipment used for that purpose. Um, which I assume is related to the word distilling. Um, goodness. Yeah, it does look like, oh Lord, doesn't it? Let's see. Contacts data, abbreviation. Numbers, as in telephone numbers. Feeling of dread before the start of the work week in slang. Sunday. Oh, I've heard this before. I don't think I've ever used it as a phrase, but I have seen it. What is it called? The Sunday. I don't know. I, I, I know I've seen it before, but I, I can't. I just can't think right now. Obsolescent kind of drive. A CD-ROM? That seems like it fits. And yeah, they don't really seem to be included on computers anymore. It does seem pretty, pretty much obsolete. Uh, goodness, yeah, it is a lord far from home, say, abroad. There we go. Go into one's phone voice, say. Go into one's phone voice. Code switch? Uh, there we go. That makes sense. That That's sort of using a different mode of speech or, or dialect or kind of cultural reference point, depending on um, the person to whom you're uh, speaking or person with whom you're interacting. Okay, thin, uh, a reed, you could describe a reedy voice as being sort of thin um, in the manner of a, of a reed instrument, I suppose, although certainly those aren't all thin. Uh, Blank and Janice comic strip, Arlo and Janice is a, is a comic strip. Check out uh, news, a newspaper comic strip. Uh, check out cho choices are lanes. Check out lanes. Check out aisles. And a suitor is a, a bow. You could call someone a sort of sweetheart, a suitor, a bow, I suppose. Does a better job than making points. Oh, does a better job than at making points. It does a better job than somebody out, out sells or out scores. There we go. So as in you know, maybe in a basketball game, maybe in a, a Nets game. Form of protest for tenants. Could be a rent strike. There we go. Oh, is it the Sunday scaries? That might be the phrase. It isn't instantly, I'm not instantly certain about it, but I, it sort of rings a bell. Clouds. Swarms of insects, for instance, maybe. Clouds of insects, swarms of insects. Approximately or so. There we go. This is looking good. Moves a little, stirs. So if you were completely still and then you moved a little, you stirred. Cube, e.g., um, a solid. Is it as simple as that? A solid object? I'm not sure. Let's look at the crosses. Piece of the pie would be a portion. There we go. That works. El Paso is a city in Texas that was clued yesterday, I think, in the puzzle. And then here we have protagonist and a long-running Phyllis 
Reynolds Nailer book series. Alice, there we go, must be. I, I'm not familiar with this series, I don't think. Here we have about 20 million people in India are Sikhs or six. And uh, flattering lines uh, would be the official poetic form of the New York Times crossword, the ode. There we go. Um, I'm still waiting for an ode to the ode theme one of these days. Office warning letters. Office warning letters. Not sure about that one. Office. I assume it just means a workplace, but it could be something else that I'm not seeing and then therefore not getting the answer. Creepy crawly, a worm. There we go. And May to November in Central America. Um, winter. Wet season. There we go. That sounds that sounds better. Uh, who said between two evils? I always pick the one I never tried before. Um, I don't know. That doesn't ring a bell to me. It's a, it's a it's a clever quip, but I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry, I don't quite see it. Great Basin people looks like the the Utes, I would think. A native, a native people. So what, what about, does that work with this? Need to pay. Yes. If you need to pay, you owe. So that, that looks good. Uh, who is this? Why do I not see? Oh, Mae West. That's an extremely in character quip for Mae West, famous Hollywood actor and quip, quipster. She has all sorts of, of a bon mot like this. Okay. Author who wrote happiness and marriage is entirely a matter of choice. Um, once again, I'm not sure offhand. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to get it through crosses. Model holiday. I'm not sure about that one either. Sorry. Brand of ranch dressing? Question mark. Interesting. So we're prefer, presumably not referring to a salad dressing. I don't think. That's interesting. What does that mean? Brand. Oh, oh. Maybe a brand used on a ranch to brand. Livestock. Maybe. Uh, that, that feels punnily appropriate, but, I, but I'm, I'm not sure what the actual answer is, so I'll have to keep going. To finish with something would be to end on it. Let's see, does that help with this model? Holiday, no, not sure. I guess wet season could be wrong. Let's look at these. Singles, ones. Queer Eye co-star Jonathan Van. Oh no, sorry. Uh, I know this is known to many people, and I know it has come up in the crossword at least once before, but I don't remember who this is. I mean, I mean, I don't remember their name. I've never seen this this series. Uh, let's see, QB Rushers collectively probably ends with an S. So, oh no, no, collectively. So it'll refer to the oh the something line. It'll be the. I actually don't know if it's the offensive line or the defensive line. That's a little I know about this sport. I'm sorry. Uh, but it'll be one of those. <laughs> Let's see. Can I solve this? Gives up seeds uh, territory, for instance. Gives up territory. Oh, Jonathan Van Ness, maybe. Light touch, a caress. There we go. That does look good. Okay, good. So, so maybe wet season is correct. That this is looking fine. Seeks shelter. I'm not sure. Blank B. Parker, Democratic candidate for president in 1904. Wow. Uh, I don't think I know that. Blueprint could be a plan, maybe. Let's look at the crosses. Tube feature with the tube. Is it referring to the London Underground or a different meaning of tube? The map? I mean, the tube map is very iconic and famous, but that feels that doesn't seem that doesn't really work to me as an answer here. I don't know. Write some letters. Email? Maybe? I'm not sure if that's right. Source of a burning odor. Blunt salespeople. I'm running out of steam, aren't I, at the moment? Baked in Italian. I'm sure I know this. Or I'm sure I'll recognize it anyway when I see it. Can I think? Baked in Italian. That's so annoying. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll recognize it when I see it. Source of a burning... Oh, scented candle. Yes, there we go. That's the source of a burning odor. So write some... Oh, 
I mean, so it's not email. It's write some letters. Oh, spell. Oh, right. You spell a word. Okay, it's the simplest possible uh, <laughs> evocation of that. Blunt salespeople are... Probably ends with an S. Blank day of visibility. March 31st observance. Trans day of visibility. So the S is confirmed, but that was fairly obvious. Let's see if that gives me anything here. Oh, I haven't looked at these clues yet. Having rhythm. If you're having rhythm, you're... Mm, not sure. Like A, B, vis-a-vis -vis other blood types. Rarer, I suppose. And here we have put on... You can add something, put, put something onto the fire, add it to the fire, that kind of thing. Having rhythm is cadent. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, this is, that's interesting. You don't really see this adjective very often. So the adjectival form of, of cadence, that's, that's, that's very interesting. Growth that may be treated with salicylic acid, a wart, I guess. And office warning. Oh, I see. It's NSFW, not safe for work. So it's warning you not to sort of maybe, I don't know, open an email attachment or something, whatever it would be, or a link or something like that. A uh, person who might sweep a board game off a table. Um, this is obviously a sort of slightly punny thing, but I'm not quite seeing what it is. Close associates to be wary of frenemies. There we go. Um, I think that must be the, the answer of a modern portmanteau. Uh, here we have simply three <laughs> exclamation points in brackets. So what is that? Oh, OMG, right. So, okay. So when you see the brackets, what it usually means is we're resulting, we're going to put something in the grid that isn't verbal. It's arguable whether this is. I suppose people do at this point actually say OMG, but it's it's mainly associated with being something textual, something that would only be, you know, that, that you would type and you would read, but you wouldn't necessarily say or hear out loud um, in that exact form. So I think that's basically what's going on with the brackets there. And then the exclamation points just indicate surprise or amazement, which is what this uh, initialism also represents. Okay, so to be wide open is to gape, to have your mouth wide open, I guess. And then birthplace of the world's major religions. Asia, I suppose. Let's see, does that, that's very vague, but very broad. But let's look and see. Blank Coleman, principal on Abbott Elementary. Ooh, I've never, I don't even think I've heard of this. This could be something other than gape. It could be gawk, maybe. I don't know, I don't know that that helps me. A bum... I don't know. This doesn't seem like it's giving me anything. What about this? Oh, a sore loser might sweep a board game off the table. Okay, it isn't actually punny. It's just someone literally sweeping a board game off the table. I thought it was going to have something to do with a croupier or something, kind of raking uh, chips. I, I don't know. I thought it was going to be something like that. But no, it was the straightforward meaning. Second in command informally. Oh, Veep, as in vice president. And then to be wide open is to gape. Okay, there we go. So... Ava Coleman, I hope that's right. Bum. Oh, Ars, yeah, okay. <laughs> Should have looked at this clue. I didn't look at it at all. Uh, there we go. So a rear end in British sort of colloquial language. Author who wrote Happiness and Marriage is Entirely a Matter of Chance. Aust oh, Jane, Aust uh, Jane Austen. Oh, did I say choice before? That's exactly the opposite of the meaning of the quotation. Sorry about that. Um, Jane Austen must have must have written this. That sounds extremely plausible. Uh, model holiday, Tess. I don't. I don't know. Brand of ranch dressing. Um. I mean, I guess it could be Jess or something, but that doesn't quite fit. Uh, it doesn't look like it would fit with the crosses. Um. Okay. Tube feature with the. Seeks shelter. Oh, maybe this isn't end on, but end in. Because then seeks shelter would be inside. Gets inside. There we go. Oh, terracotta, for instance, is, is you know, like baked earth. So baked in Italian cotta. I should have thought about that. There's panna cotta and all sorts of, all sorts of things. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what that is. Okay. Blunt salespeople are 
Oh, pot dealers. That's very clever. So they're literally selling a blunt. That's very, uh, certainly misdirected me. Okay. Blank B. Parker Elton, I guess. Tube feature with the, oh, the gap, as in mind the gap, which the the tube announcer uh, periodically says. There we go. So that it, it was the London Underground that I was that I was uh, thinking of there. Well, well, it was the London Underground that the constructor was thinking of. Okay, so Alton, I guess, and then oh, a Stetson hat. Okay, it is referring to a ranch, a you know, a cattle ranch, for instance. Um, but the dressing is something you wear. So a, a hat, a Stetson hat. That's very clever. That's a very clever bit of misdirection. And then that's it. That was the Friday crossword and a nice themeless edition of the puzzle. And um, yeah, it sort of slowed me, slowed me down in, I think, the two eastern corners of the grid, largely. Definitely faced some resistance there. Um, and a pretty, uh, pretty broad range of answers here. And, and a, you know, some, some sort of modern neologisms like frenemies and... I think there was one more of those, maybe. Oh, Sunday Scaries, um, something that may, maybe it's maybe it's been around for a while. I don't know, but I this is something I only became aware of as a phrase within I don't know the last decade, maybe. Um, but let me know. Maybe it, maybe it precedes that. I don't I don't really have a clue. <laughs> anyway, there we go. That was the Friday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, once again, I completely forgot to find the clues from yesterday's puzzle. I will really do my best to remember to do that. Uh, tomorrow to find the comments from the previous day. So yes, apologies for that. Um, I will do that tomorrow if I, if I remember, which I'll try to do. Okay. Anyway, that was the video. That was the crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. I will be back tomorrow one way or the other for the Saturday themeless crossword, which might be a step up in difficulty from this. We'll just have to come back and find out. I hope you do. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm-hmm.